Moving boats around seems pretty straightforward. Water flows downhill. If it fits, it ships. Pretty simple concept. But as it turns out, humans have found a lot of interesting ways to get boats to places they wouldn't naturally be able to. This includes inclined planes, locks, trains and railways, slips and lifts. And if you've got the muscle, you can always just do what's called portaging, or literally dragging or carrying it across terrain, as the Vikings did. If you don't have Viking strength though, or not enough friends, you can now utilize the Falkirk wheel to get your boat to higher ground. And it's utilized to connect the Forth and Clyde Canal and the Union Canal between Glasgow and Edinburgh, which has gone 60 years without a lock system that had previously connected the two largest cities in Scotland. Previously, 11 locks had been used until their destruction in 1933. Those 11 locks carried boats a total of 115 vertical feet and took pretty much all day to accomplish, no matter which direction you were going. With the Falkirk wheel, nine locks are effectively removed, leaving just 36 feet of locks required. Using the same amount of energy that it takes to boil eight kettles of water, boats are raised and lowered approximately eight stories, which equals out to about one kettle per story, isn't it? The shape of the wheel was inspired by a combination of things, including a whale rib cage, ship's propeller, and probably the most visually, a Celtic axe or bearded axe. Built in 2002 and christened by Queen Elizabeth, it was meant to be a landmark showpiece of what was called the Millennium Link Project, both a celebration of the connection between the two cities, while also connecting to the history of the area. It has a diameter of 115 feet, two opposing arms extending 49 feet, beyond a central axle, and two 21-foot-wide caissons filled with 55,000 gallons of water each, built to fit the narrow canal boats. This balancing act is explained through Archimedes' principle. It states that a floating object in water displaces an equal amount of weight in water. What this means is whether the caisson is empty or has any size floating vessel at all, the weight is almost exactly equal. In this case, about 500 tons. That balancing act is essential to the energy efficiency and operation of the wheel. It also reduces the strain, as well as wear and tear on the mechanical structure. Electric sensors monitor hydraulic watertight steel gates, which seal off each caisson when emptied or filled. A hydraulic clamp fixes each arm in place as well for safety measures. Ten hydraulic motors power a central axle connected to both outer arms at an eighth revolution per minute. This completes a half-turn cycle in four minutes, clockwise or counterclockwise, or anti-clockwise here. Varying the direction also prevents uneven wear and tear. Three large, identically sized gears connected by two smaller ones do the big movement, while a system of wheels and rollers ensures both caissons remain upright throughout rotation while preventing any real chance of the caissons from capsizing. The original model to test the general feasibility of the design was done with Legos. Its operation now is all monitored by an operator at the bottom. The caissons are open to the boats using vertical watertight doors instead of the standard hinge doors on locks, and pumps fill the gaps as required when transitioning from the canal and docking pit to the wheel itself. That docking pit needs to stay dry and empty of water since if the arms of the wheel are submerged, they would create a buoyancy that would make turning the wheel much more difficult. The showpiece aspect of it has certainly worked, attracting millions of tourists over the last two decades. Falkirk has quite a history being the location of William Wallace's defeat, and prior to that, the Antonine Wall, essentially the edge of the Roman Empire in the second century. In fact, portions of the Antonine Wall still exist very close to here and were directly in the way of the canal on the high ground above the wheel. Instead of driving the canal straight through the wall, a tunnel was built underneath prior to the locks required for further elevation up to the Union Canal. Either way though, a four minute ride on the Falkirk wheel beats a half a day navigation through nine locks. With a lifespan of about 120 years, the wheel should be operating for about another century or so. Check out another video here. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers for helping me get here. And as always, until next time, get lost.